All right, now let's talk about uh, mosquito control measures. I'll do this pretty quickly. Of course, you are clinicians, not malaria control experts. So this is less part of your day-to-day -day activity, but it's important. Uh, this is an old uh, US Army poster from World War II. We want to keep you from going to bed with malaria mosquitoes. Uh, I think I'll, this is an old, old evidence that it works, but I'm going to skip this for time. Uh, insecticide impregnated bed nets are the key. It's not just the bed nets, but it's putting insecticide into them. Unfortunately, the only insecticide we have that goes into bed nets is pyrethrins, and there's a lot of pyrethrin resistance now in Africa. Um, but these are fairly inexpensive. They can last for a few years and have clearly shown significant benefits, in some cases, huge benefits with 20% decreases in childhood mortality in villages that use bed nets. IRS is indoor residual spraying of insecticides. People that look like this come to your house and uh, for some reason, Africans are willing to let them in. I'm a little surprised by that. And they come and they spray your house. I think the reason people let them in is because it works. Uh, IRS decreases the number of mosquitoes in your house. And this is a very important measure. It works really well. Uh, I won't go into all the details again because of time. It works really well. The problem is it's very expensive. Uh, so it root there's no country in Africa that can do IRS throughout the country. They tend to do it in selected areas. Which areas to do it in, high or low transmission, is somewhat uh, debatable. Uh, the other problem is insecticide resistance. Resistance to all four main classes of insecticides, pyrethroids, organochlorates, that's DDT, the carbamates, and the organophosphates. But especially to the pyrethroids and DDT. And this map shows areas with confirmed resistance to any insecticides, of course, Africa is full of, drug, of insecticide resistance now. The, the, the newer insecticides that are organophosphates and carbamates tend to still work, but not surprisingly, they're a lot more expensive than the older insecticides. Again, making more of a challenge uh, for um, IRS. But IRS really works. This is Nagangara, a village in Tororo District, Uganda. Um, the blue line here shows incidence of malaria in a cohort that we were studying very closely. Kids were getting malaria two, three, four times a year. They got bed nets. It didn't make much difference here, we think because of pyrethroid resistance. Then they started getting spraying with good quality insecticides, either carbamates or organophosphates, and malaria came way down. It still tends to pop up right after, right, you know, after some months after IRS, we're not giving it quite frequently enough. It starts to pop up, but every time they get IRS, it comes down again. So IRS works remarkably well in Uganda. We just can't afford to do it everywhere. So this is what happened in northern Uganda. A Apache district had very high level malaria. This is a different measure. This is the percentage of children who present with fever who have malaria. It was more than half of kids with fever had malaria. DDT spraying didn't make much difference because of drug resistance. But with spraying of other insecticides, and now this is regular spraying over a number of years, Malaria gradually came down. Eventually, instead of 60%, maybe only 5% of kids with fever had malaria. We were doing very well, but the government decided they had to spray somewhere else. They thought this was a success. They gave a round of, they gave everybody a bed net and they left. And this is what happened. Malaria came roaring back. There were headlines in the newspapers about malaria epidemics. Uh, you can't get things just down to 5%. You've got to get them down to 0%. And of course, that's not easy. Okay, so we will skip the malaria vaccine because we don't have one yet. Uh, and skip transgenic mosquitoes. Can malaria be eradicated? Bill Gates says we need to eradicate malaria in his lifetime. He's going to have to live to 200 probably for that to happen. Sorry to say. We have had some great successes. We see um, Sri Lanka, but then failures. Here's the old famous slide showing uh, attempts at malaria eradication back in the 1960s in Sri Lanka. They had virtually no cases, 17 cases reported in 1963. Then malaria came roaring back a million cases a few years later. Though now all these years later, malaria has been eliminated in Sri Lanka. So it's possible, but very challenging. Uh, the plan for malaria elimination is to gradually shrink this map to work on the easier places first, there is a big program from some of my colleagues here at UCSF 
working in Swaziland and Namibia down here. There's a lot of effort here in Southeast Asia. The heartland of Africa, it's obviously going to take longer, but that's what we're working towards. So with that, I'll end. And uh, I, I'm sorry we don't have too much time, but I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, but first, I'll ask you a question. Uh, what is wrong with this cartoon? The guy comes home from work and he says, what a day. I must have spread malaria across half the country. <laughs> Anybody want to tell me what's wrong with it? Actually, it has multiple errors. Well, it's a mill. It's a mill allocated. Exactly right. right. There's, I, I'm sorry I don't know you all, but you, uh, the speaker, recognize that male mosquitoes wear a tie, so you can tell this is male. <laughs> malaria is transmitted by females. Malaria is only transmitted by females because females need the extra protein from blood to produce eggs. Secondly, he says, what a day. That's not right. Malaria is transmitted. <laughs> okay, any comments or questions? 